Today is the 30th of March, 2015, and Mark wanted to have a Bible study this evening, a little bit different, and we're going to have it on Psalm 27 and Psalm 15. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is I'm going to really need for you to speak up, Mark, because you have a soft voice, so... I want you to read the whole psalm, and then we're going to discuss each verse, okay? okay? The Lord is my light and my salvation, and whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me, be upon the land, and shall be fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired, the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. For in the, in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion, and the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me, and he shall set me upon a rock. And now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me, Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me, and answer me. When thou saidest, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me, put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help, leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelly. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Well, there's a, a lot of people out there uh, today who are Christians that if you go by their statements that they make on Facebook and and out in public and in churches and preachers and everything else, they would not like this psalm very well. Because, you know, they, they never want to ever admit that they have trials or sorrows or sufferings. They only, only want to dwell on what makes their life look like it's unscathed. They want to put on good appearances before people that they are successful. And they have the blessings of the Lord. Far be it for me to ever admit that I'm going through any trials. Because if I do, that's an admission that God isn't blessing me. But what they don't understand is some of the greatest blessings... And the fellowship of God come in the midst of our greatest sufferings and our greatest tribulations. During the time of the Inquisition and during the time of Fox's Book of Martyrs, when all that was happening, God's church was growing by leaps and bounds. <laughs> Look at his church today. Oh, I got an email, or I mean, I saw on a Facebook page the other day of a, a Westland Methodist minister. It's way up in the Westland Methodist Church, made his statement. Or it was some newfangled version of the Bible. You know that passage that says that I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it? You should have seen this newfangled translation something to the fact I'm not quoting it verbatim but uh, 
I will grow my church and it will be more expansive than you ever imagined. <laughs> oh man. Anyway, this psalm is a psalm of David and it's actually, if you notice, it is a petition to God. It's a prayer. Many of David's psalms are not only praising God, but they're also petitioning God. And he starts out by making a declarative statement, which, if we're one of God's elect, we should all be able to make this statement affirmatively without question. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Jonah, when he got picked up by the whale, and he got vomited out on the beach there. What was one of the things that Jonah ended up saying? He said, Salvation is of the Lord. <laughs> Salvation is of the Lord. And that's what David is saying here. The Lord is my light and my salvation. People forget that. I put, posted a, a little thing on the Facebook which said, After all is said and done, Christ has done all that is said and done regarding my eternal life in his son after all is said and done the Lord is my light and my salvation if we did not have the light of the Holy Spirit which regenerated our heart we wouldn't have any salvation we could never choose or make a decision or accept Jesus in our heart if we did not have the light of the Holy Spirit regenerating our hearts, giving us new birth, and he says, David, the Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? We're not trusting in the merits of free will. We're not trusting in the merits of works. We're not trusting in anything other than the fact that the Lord is my light and my salvation. That's why we don't have any fear. Another passage of Scripture says, Perfect love casteth out fear. The Lord is the strength of my life. I will look unto the hills, which cometh my strength. My strength cometh from the Lord. The Lord is the strength of our lives. We can't look to anything else. Christ is solid rock we stand. All other ground is sinking sand. Of whom shall I be afraid? If you're a Christian and you're walking around and you're shaking in your boots because somebody has said something about you or somebody says they're going to get even with you or somebody's said they had a whatever. You don't have to be afraid if you're one of God's people. When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Remember what happened when they accosted Jesus in the garden? And it said they fell back. They fell back. His very presence caused them to stumble and fall. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. 24th chapter of Matthew says that in the last days perilous times will come and there will be wars and rumors of wars. And it says many hearts will fail them. <laughs> We should not be afraid of what's going on in the world. 
One thing I have, de I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and inquire in his temple. Inquire in his temple. What's his temple? The beauty of the Lord, Jesus Christ. He said, if you destroy this temple, I'll rebuild it in three days. They thought he was talking about the temple in Jerusalem. He was talking about the fact that he would raise from the dead again. And we're going to see that exemplified here more and more in the next two weeks. So people are talking about the resurrection. For in time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. That's a declarative statement by David. He was a first-hand witness of the fact that many, many times God had hidden him from his enemies when they were encompassed all around about him. That one song that I used to sing as a kid, you know, there's more with us than be with him. We're on the winning side. If banners unfurl, we'll tell the whole world that Jesus is captain of God. There's none to fear when he is near, though fierce the conflict may be. We'll never give in in the fight against sin, because with Christ, there is victory. He will hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. And we're not talking about Peter either. <laughs> he says that they called him a, Peter refers to him as a stumbling stone, a rock of offense. That's what he is to the world, a stumbling stone and a rock of offense. But to us, he is the unshakable, unmovable always provable rock, the foundation. Remember that song we used to sing as little kids? You know, he built his rock, he built his house upon the sand. The rains came and washed it away and then he built his house upon the rock. Unshakable rock of Christ. And now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy I will sing yea I will sing praises unto the Lord so here we have a combination petition where David is praying that God would uh, have mercy upon him and at the same time he's praising him, at the same time he's praising him. You never go wrong when you're praising God. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy upon me and answer me. There's nothing wrong with crying out to God. I got an email the other day. Somebody was trying to put a guilt trip on somebody because she was had admitted that she was pleading and petitioning God for some things and she wept over it. And the person said, you shouldn't be crying while you're praying. Well, that's certainly not what David said here. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me and answer me. When thou say to seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. We should not be looking to any other person on the face of the earth other than Jesus Christ when we're praying. We should be seeking his face. There's a whole plethora, millions of people every day 
that are praying to other gods other than the face of Christ, including Mary, patron saints, dead people, Mother Teresa, priests, popes, on and on and on. Going into these uh, meditative prayers, they're not seeking the face of the Lord like David is here. When thou saidest, Seek my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me, put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help, leave me not. Neither forsake me, O God, of my salvation. That should be our prayer. And we're in the midst of all kind of struggles and every imaginable kind of trial and maybe everything seems to be coming against us. What's wrong with praying that God would, uh, would not forsake us? And not put us away in anger. And not hide his face from us. Not leave us. And remind him that he is the God of our salvation. He doesn't need to be reminded. But, you know, I've often told people, prayer changes our hearts. It doesn't change God's mind. Prayer changes our hearts. It doesn't change God's mind. People say that, Fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Yeah, it changes his heart. It softens his heart to God. Instead of that saying that says prayer changes things, it should be prayer changes people, people's hearts, when they cry out to God here. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Well, we can, Rosette and I both can speak strongly to that, that particular verse. Neither one of our mothers and neither one of our fathers, and they're both living, understand us. They don't understand us. They think we've turned on them. They think we've turned on the family. Only because we haven't subscribed to what they're upholding and subscribing to what they're reinforcing in the families. But we have a tremendous promise here. When our fathers and our mothers forsake us, then the Lord's promised that he'll take us up. And so this message is to all of the fathers and the mothers who have turned against elect children of God. Look out. Look out. Because God is going to uh, take us up. He's going to take up his elect. He's going to be a shield for us. He's going to be a buckler for us. And then David says, Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. What's he mean by that? After it's all said and done, he's done all that's said and done regarding salvation through his son. That's what he's talking about. After it's all said and done, he's done all that's said and done through eternal salvation through his son. Deliver me not unto the will of mine enemies. For false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. <laughs> wow. I can tell you that that is, if you want to see that particular verse being exemplified in today's 
society. Just go on Facebook for a little bit. <laughs> that should be all of the people who are start trying to stand up for the Word of God on Facebook. Deliver me not over into the will of mine enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. There is a land of living people on Facebook. There are some people that are in the land of the living on Facebook. And there's an awful lot of people in the dead land on Facebook. There's a lot of dead ones on there too. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. It doesn't say wait on your circumstances to change it doesn't say wait to win the lottery wait till you buy a good scratch off ticket i know a fellow that every time he goes into a uh, convenience store of any kind he's buying another scratch off ticket it doesn't say wait on winning the sweepstakes or don't wait on winning the powerball or don't wait till you get a good scratch off ticket. It says, wait, I say, on the Lord. And it says, he shall strengthen thy heart. He's not talking about here getting wealthy. He's not talking about here rising in social graces of society. He's talking about getting your heart strengthened. You cannot serve God and man the Bible says. You cannot serve two masters. You're going to love the one and hate the other and hate the one and love the other. Wait, I say, on the Lord. So that, this passage of Scripture is a tremendous encouragement. Mark is the one that actually chose this particular uh, passage of Scripture and I put that on Facebook this afternoon and I hope that this Bible study on the 27th chapter of Psalms has been an inspiration and a blessing to everybody as we've tried to go through it verse by verse. Dear Lord, we pray that you would take this psalm and we would use it for our edification and for our encouragement during these times that we're living in. We ask this in Christ's name and for your glory. Amen. Dismiss us in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for the message that you've given us tonight from your word. We pray and thank you for the Psalm of the Psalm of David, Psalm 27. Amen.